creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. Welcome to Creative Living Today. We're going to learn how to arrange flowers, prepare salads, and talk about how to find your own passion. One of my guests is Casey Schwartz, and she's a floral designer and the co-owner of Flower Duet in Redondo Beach, California. Casey's going to show how to line a glass vase with different types of greenery and then use a technique she calls chop and drop to create a beautiful flower arrangement. This technique can make all of us look more like professionals. Another guest is Connie Moyers, and she represents Western Research Kitchens in Los Angeles, California. Connie will talk about the abundant selection of prepackaged salads that are now available in most supermarkets. She'll also show us a variety of all of the add-ons that can be used, including croutons, tortilla strips, and even wonton strips. And we'll begin the show by talking to Sue Hansen, who is a motivational speaker who travels all across the country. Sue says that finding your passion is predicated on the notion that you're aware of your purpose in life. She will explain how to know what you stand for and what's important to you in order to achieve this way of life. Her business is called Sue Hansen Speaks, and she lives in Montrose, Colorado. Sue, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I wish we had time to talk about every topic that's on your website that you do seminars about, but the one I really wanted to talk to you about was about finding your passion, and, and that's not necessarily your job or uh, your dream home. It's, well, maybe you better describe it. How do we go about finding a passion and why? Well, first of all, why is it important? I, I think that that's the, the best place to start oh. is that, um, is it, we only have a short time on this earth, and it's a, it's and at the older you get, the more you realize it's mm -hmm. kind of a short life, and so we find ourselves in you know lots of people are in jobs that they are not happy about. Mm -hmm. They are not they they're not fulfilled. It's it really is work, uh -huh. and my philosophy is if you if you find something that you're passionate about, then you're never working mm -hmm. ever. Your 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 every day is a, a joy, and I've been lucky enough to find what that is for me, and that's being a speaker and trainer and actually helping people be better people. So so passion is is like a particularly important thing. I think that people sell themselves short by not exploring enough about what 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 they would do if they didn't get paid. I mean, think about that. What would you do every single day, because it just brings you such pleasure, even if you didn't get paid? And mm -hmm. um, and I feel like we we find ourselves in jobs that are not necessarily the kind of fulfilling mm -hmm. jobs or in areas of pursuit that are not really what we want to do. So I, I, I counsel people to, number one, find out what, th what their purpose is. You know, it, I, almost everything I talk about, it goes back to what's most important to you. Mm -hmm. Because then from that point, if you know what's most important to you then, then, and you have a plan for that, nobody can thwart you off your plan in getting to that passion. So, and you, it may not be something that every job, I, I'm not saying that you just get out of college and boom, your first job, everything's going to be the best ever. Mm -hmm. You know, you, but, but if you understand who or, you mm -hmm. are and what's most important to you, then you can make choices that can help you get to that level of, of job that you truly enjoy and that passion, life is mm -hmm. sort of effortless because you're doing exactly what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Well, now you mentioned, or as I mentioned too, that you're a speaker. Mm -hmm. Do you find that it's hard to get yourself all geared up for certain topics? Mm -hmm. Or is this such a passion with you, knowing that you're hopefully helping somebody else maybe find their passion, that it's you don't get nervous, it's not work? No, it's not work at all. In fact, um, I think hmm. that I was lucky enough, and it wasn't my first pursuit either. I didn't, never thought I would be a speaker. That didn't wasn't oh. on my list. I had a medical company that I owned. But... Um, but I came to it, and what I realized is that, you know, when you find that, then you, you don't, you know how you hear people go, oh, I have to go to work. Mm -hmm. I never say that. Uh -huh. I never say that because I really love what I do, mm -hmm. and I think that's lucky. So not everybody gets to that point. So, um, so the, the, there's, there's seven steps in order to get there, and, you know, I wrote this book because um, I felt like, well, it only took me, you know, 10 years to write the book. It's like, <laughs> just, just saying it wasn't book. a novel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> because I'm ADD and I kept thinking there's no way I'm going to be able to focus long enough to write uh -huh. a book on passion. I couldn't either. <laughs> so I kind of did it in a, work, in a workbook fashion so that you could work through it. Number uh -huh. one, finding out what, what is your direction. That's kind of, I, I think of it as a road map, you know, where are you going first and foremost? What do you want to do with your life? How do you get there? And I think that trying every single thing in pursuit of your passion is important. 
So, you know, not saying I can't do that or I'm not going to do that or no, I won't try that. If you're going to try to get to passion, you have to be willing to be open to maybe take risks, everything. A little take a little bit risk, too. right? And, and that's, that's hard for some of us. Well, it is because we we fear mm -hmm. um, change, and you know, also we get in our own way a lot. You, oh, yeah. you know what I mean uh -huh. when I say that? Mm -hmm. um, and when I talk to groups, I say, you know, the worst your worst enemy is sitting in your chair <laughs> because you're the one that talks yourself out of that. Uh -huh. I can't do it. I'm too fat. I'm too skinny. That'll never work. Uh -huh. um, and and the bottom line is that we have the opportunity to do whatever we want, and I I. So getting out of your way, own way is the number one thing that you got to do is stop talking to your, yourself out of these mm -hmm. things. Um, and then the second thing I think is important is that you have to be willing to um, conquer your fear. You know, everybody has mm -hmm. fear, just like you said about things. Did, but, were you ever fear, fearful when you started speaking? Um, I, I say no, but I probably was. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I'm sure there were... I got better over time, that's for sure. sure. I'm mm -hmm. sure if you ask somebody who first turned me out of the block, <laughs> uh, well, no, not so good. Yeah. Um, but over time, you get better. Uh -huh. And if you love something, then you don't mind putting the energy and time into uh -huh. making that happen. Uh -huh. So um, so I had, the fear is a thing that you have to conquer. And I, I tell the story about um, when I was in college and I was in ROTC, and they asked us to repel off of the business building. Now, this is some years ago mm -hmm. before it was, um, you know, kind of in vogue to be a rock climber and jump off things. <laughs> and, um, and, and when I got to the top, I was, I found myself, when he said, it's your turn to, to jump off, I just found myself paralyzed. Paralyzed, uh -huh. And um, has that ever, have you ever done anything like that? Uh, no, but I would be that way. You would be I, paralyzed? Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you what the secret to it is that when you when you start crying and they they just kind of throw you over then you have no choice <laughs> so here i come <laughs> that's it but but i found that as soon as i was over the edge the fear dissipated because it was it's just taking that first step okay. so the analogy to me is that whenever you're fearful as long as you take one step closer to whatever you fear to oh. conquer it just step by step then you have a different approach to fear you're not it's not paralyzing you it's mm -hmm. just part of the the, the process so okay. I think as you as you look at as you look and try to conquer the the things and find find your passion, you have to be a little bit of a risk taker. Mm -hmm. But you have to think through those things. Mm -hmm. So what's most important? What am I going to do to get out of my way? How am I going to try every every single thing on the road to get there? Mm -hmm. And um and and you know be persistent about it. Mm -hmm. And and you are every step you take, you're eliminating some obstacle. Mm -hmm. Like you like you were saying, sure. you may have been a little nervous, it may have just been adrenaline kicking in, but you eliminated that fear that many of us would have about speaking in front of a group. And if you, if you, if you succumb to your fear, then you will not, you will not try anything more. Mm -hmm. Then you say, well, that didn't work and mm -hmm. I can't do it, so I'm not going to do it. And then, of course, you know, if you have this well thought out plan, and you know, I've, I can tell you I've had several life plans because life gets in the way of your plan. <laughs> something happens, you know, you have a grandkid, something happens over here, you got to do this, you change jobs, there's lots of things that uh -huh. happen. But as long as you have that core, um, what's the core piece, what, what is really, what drives you? Mm -hmm. Um, your passion. What That's makes really you who you are, mm -hmm. and you follow that, then you're always going to be authentic and true to yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, t I encourage people all the time, you know, there's always, everybody always has something that, gee, I would like that. Gee, I'd, I'd wonder what would happen if. Uh -huh. Gee, I'd try that. You know, explore it and see if you can do it because you'll, you don't want to live a life you'll and then never regret. never know otherwise. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then, last but not least, uh, the sense of humor. You you work that into all of your presentations. Well, I and think that's it's important. critical. Uh -huh. Do you do you agree? Well, I think you have to have it. Right. Uh -huh. So you know, to me, I think that you have to um, look lightly, take your take life seri life seriously, and yourself less so. less seriously, and, uh -huh. and really enjoy what happens, and and make fun of yourself if you need to, and. And, um, and enjoy, be a, be a light-hearted person. Be mm -hmm. easy to be around. Mm -hmm. I remember one time I was, um, I w actually I was in Albuquerque speaking, and I had a car accident. And I mean, it was, no, it was, it was Phoenix because it was like 114. It doesn't get that hot in New Mexico, <laughs> does it? Like 140 degrees. It was so hot, and um, and my bumper was dragging on the ground. And I was I was trying to drive home to Colorado, and um, and when I got to Colorado, finally. Um, I had an appointment the next day in Denver, and so I was going to have to drive to Denver. And so I had this bumper, and I could—I didn't have time to rent a car, and I had this <laughs> bumper. That, I mean, I looked ragtag. I didn't want to meet with a client that way. So I, I kind of strung up the bumper and duct taped it. And then I had these fake, these big um, Band-Aids that are like this big. And oh, I put a big Band-Aid on the car, <laughs> and, um, and then I made a big sign that said, cell phone incident. 
because I was on the cell phone. I, the, the police did yeah. not know that, but I was on the cell phone at the time. Uh -huh. And um, and so I drove to Denver, and people, of course, you know, having uh -huh. fun, laughing, and things like that. Uh -huh. So, you know, it, instead of getting so serious about oh, things yeah. that happen to you in life, you need to take a, a lighter look at it. I, I think you're absolutely right. Well, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you. you coming today. Thanks. Connie, it's always nice to have you here. And when you said we were going to talk about salads, it makes me think of growing up. We always had salad at almost every meal, but it was just lettuce and tomatoes, and you put it on the plate along with everything else. And now salads play such a big role in our meals. They do. And, you know, what's also easy is we have all of these available ones that are already mixed in mm -hmm. the... And I hate making salad. I do I don't too. know why. It's simple, but it's just nice to dump things out of a bag uh -huh. and we don't have to wash it it's already been washed for us it's just really great mm -hmm. so pre-cut pre-measured mm -hmm. basically if you're using the smaller things like onions or whatever but you know there's all different kinds of salads and now most of the time we have a pre-meal salad like instead of on mm -hmm. your plate like you were talking about the, how we grew up and they'll be on a bowl or a plate and mm -hmm. it's just a real simple mixture of greens whatever greens you like and you know you there's nothing that says you can't mix some of those right. bags of greens too right if it's mm -hmm. you know want a little bit more but what really finishes off is a course the dressing but there's so many toppers available I've now. I've never seen so many different types of toppers. They are. For salads. These are Mrs. Cubison's toppings and there's that one is Texas and Butter Toast Crunch you're going to put on there and you know those are these nice are big crunchy. thick ones mm -hmm. pretty um, and good and crunchy and toasted and that just really finishes that little salad off it and really makes does. it uh, really good. These mm -hmm. are Asiago cheese um, salads and so those are really good. Then just put a little bit of dressing or even just a little bit of olive oil or right. something that's not much and that's all you have to do. Mm -hmm. So that's your pre-meal type of that's salad. That's a pre-meal salad and then you know a lot of times we have leftovers whether it's steak, brisket, salmon that we have today, chicken, any of those mm -hmm. or of course we could cook it for that, grill it, and then just put it on your salad, and it's just such a lighter, whole meal uh -huh. deal. And, you know, a lot of the restaurants have that on their menus mm -hmm. these days, and so that's really nice. So I've just chosen a real pretty mixed green salad that, that we've put in here, and this is some salmon that um, I had already cooked and had a little bit left over, so we'll just sprinkle it so over the top. So this would be the main dish. This salmon is some good wild-caught Pacific salmon, uh -huh. and... Um, I just cooked it on the broiler. You could cook it on the grill or um, any place to do that. But doesn't that make a gorgeous oh, salad? And you would um, pay quite a bit for that salad in the mm -hmm. in the restaurant. So that's really good. And the thing about salmon, and and I think it's an easy error for us to make. We're used to cooking most things quite a while, uh -huh. and salmon cooks so fast it that does. it's really easy to overcook it. And it, but it's just so easy to fix. This one had some honey mustard on it, but you don't mm. have to do anything mm -hmm. to it if you and don't you, want to. You can grill it and broil it, what it bake it, poach it, any of those uh -huh. things that that you could do. And you know, along with uh, croutons, there's all of these tortilla strips, wonton strips, and uh -huh. those are fun and exciting. I know one of the restaurants that I go to a lot at lunch has tortilla strips on their salad, and I just really enjoy that meal salad that uh -huh. way. But uh, today, I think we're going to put these the wonton, wonton oh, good. strips I on there. Tried the wonton. And they're soy ginger, so they're really uh, a different one. Uh -huh. These are made by Mrs. Kubison's, and they're just really good. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you know, there's all kinds of toppings that you could add to it if you wanted to. We oh, can add a few almonds, any uh -huh. kind of nut you wanted to put on there. Um, we could put olives or the it wouldn't mandarin, these, oranges. mandarin oranges be mm -hmm. really attractive on top of this. Oh, too. that'd be especially good, I think, with the salmon mm -hmm. like and the oranges. and the soy. I uh -huh. think. Uh huh. So that's a good choice too. So we used to use everything in the refrigerator to make stew. Now we can just about do the same thing and make our own with salad. With salads, can't we? And then, of course, just top it off with a little bit of cracked pepper, and that really adds some good flavor to it. So simple. Well, we didn't ideas. add salt to it. We didn't add anything. And then our mm -hmm. favorite dressing. Uh huh. So you know, there's other kinds of salads too. There's like egg salad, potato salad, tuna salad, chicken salad, mm -hmm. and those can be meals or they can be a side dish. Uh huh. 
so you can get a lot of use out of some of the things and just like you said you may not have leftovers but you can plan and have planned over so that's that you right. can that's save a little bit. That's what I have to bit. do at my house because <laughs> if I set it all on the table it's probably going to be gone and then add these different kinds of toppers and it just mm -hmm. makes it really special. It looks like something that came from a restaurant. It really does. Well thank you very much Connie. I always learn something when you're on. Thank you. Casey, it's nice to have you here, and I know you teach classes all the time. Is that where the idea of chop and drop came from? We were especially trying to uh, work with tulips, and we were having a, a bit of a battle. And we thought, how can we just grab these all together and uh -huh. just stick them in a vase? Because that's how frustrating they were getting. And that's <laughs> what we did. So that's where this idea came from, the chop and drop. Like. So we gathered everything together. We bound it together and popped it in a vase, and then we filled in. And that's that's what this type that's what of this arrangement is. is. This is one chop big and drop. chop and drop. Uh -huh. So I'm going to teach you a little bit how to do that. And, and it's, uh, it's seen from all all sides. All it's sides. Beautiful. Uh -huh. And you could do this with what other types? You said the tulips. The tulips work really beautifully. Any kind of flower will do it. I oh. especially like working with these. These are called Alstroemeria. They're also called Peruvian Lily, and they come in so many colors. Oh. And the joy of them is too. At the end of a stem, you'll have all these wonderful blooms, uh -huh. up to seven, if not more. Uh, going on and you want to buy them when they're still pretty tight mm -hmm. uh, and closed. Uh, these are a great um, position because they're just starting to open and the flowers themselves were sometimes double or triple in oh, size uh -huh. and so it'll be end up being just absolutely it'll gorgeous. It'll really fill it out. And what else uh -huh. you were looking for when you're buying Alstroemeria is you want to have the greenery uh, pointing upwards and you still want the flowers nestled in the greenery. Mm -hmm. If the flowers have grown past the greenery they've been cut for a while oh. and aren't as fresh. So this is what you want to look for, something mm -hmm. that looks like this. And then for also, we're going to be removing the greenery that's going to be on the stem. Mm -hmm. No thorns here, so Thank very goodness. easy to clean. So we just slide those right off and, uh, and we're good to go. And I've already done that with some of the stems here. So if you want to clean that one, mm -hmm. that's good fun to do. So in addition to the Alstroemeria that we're working with today, we're going to use a filler flower that's going to do sort of a collar to tie in uh, the color. Mm -hmm. And this is called Solidago. And uh, it's got all these little branches and stems on it as well. And uh, we clean these the same way as oh, the Alstroemeria. We, we just slide uh -huh. down what we don't want, mm -hmm. um, leaving all the good stuff up top. Oh, uh -huh. So that's what we're going to use for our collar. Um, but the first thing we need to do is prep the vase. And we're going to use tea leaves. And this is going to add just a little bit more girth to the vase to hold our stems in. Because mm -hmm. sometimes if you have a wide mouth vase, you need a lot of flowers. Uh -huh. Sometimes you don't have a lot of flowers. So you think, well, what can I do to take up more space? Oh, I see. So what we, what we do is we line it with, uh, with greenery sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, in this sense, that's what we're going to do. So I've taken the tea leaf, and I've actually just cut away the bottom part of it. Uh -huh. And we're just, just going to, just with the clippers. Mm -hmm. And these are very hardy, and they will last weeks. Uh -huh. And sometimes even out even of water. Even water. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, yeah. they won't break down like some of this stuff. And what we're going to do is we're just going to slide them in and then we're going to bend them back. And we're just going to put three in. So I'll go ahead and pop this one in here. And this is just going to set our frame for our... You called it a collar. A collar. And that's kind mm -hmm. of what it looks right. like. Right. If you want to pop that one in, slide it in, and then just ease back that spine a little bit. Very nice. And that already looks pretty. And mm -hmm. if you had a whole bunch of these you could do, you could just do this first and get it ahead and put them uh -huh. aside. Oh, and yeah. Then, uh, and then we can start working with the flowers. Now, we'll you just... don't have any water in that Water is already in there, Oh, it actually. is in there. Yep, okay. water is already in there. Because since we're going to gather these together and, and then chop them, we want to have that water in there. Because stems usually close up in about 10 seconds. Oh, okay. So once you've cut your stems, you want to be ready to place them in to there. To drop. Right, to drop Got it. So the fun thing about this arrangement is we're just going to pile our flowers on each other. We're going to build <laughs> sort of a pyramid of flowers and what we're going to do mostly or pay attention to is trying to keep them all about the same. The top keeping it keep pretty them level. all about the same height. So you don't want anybody um, shooting up really tall because oh. then they'll um, stick out and look a little odd. So we're just going to keep mm -hmm. taking all of our stems and we're just going to lay them on top of each other and make a big pile of flowers and that's <laughs> not that hard to do. So I'll give you some there and we're just going to keep going back and forth. Laying them on there. Start our second level there. And you can see you could do this with a whole bunch of different colored Alstroemeria. Sometimes if you go to the grocery and pick up some flowers, they'll have two or three bunches of Alstroemeria for a very reasonable price. So you buy three bunches, you come home, and you, and you pull these together. And maybe you grab a rubber band out of that junk drawer. <laughs> and that's all you're going to need to make this work. 
keep piling them up foolproof. there. Foolproof. Yes, it is foolproof. Moves down a little bit. Great. These are looking so pretty. Just a nice big pile of flowers. Okay. And a couple more. It's about 20 stems we have here, which would oh. be if uh, for bunches. Usually they sell 10 stems in a bunch. Oh, so two bunches. So two is bunches what we is need. all is uh -huh. all it is. So we have this gorgeous collection of flowers, and from here we just want to gather them together. And we see we have a wonderful collection, and maybe a little bit tall mm -hmm. there. So we pull that down you, uh -huh. a little bit, but we'll keep him sticking out a little bit. He might even out. And now we have all these this massive amounts uh -huh. of stems. And what we're going to want to do is um, we're going to cut. And we're not going to cut all of it off, but we're going to cut most of it off just to give us a head start because we are going to put a rubber band around this set. And we're not going to commit with our final cut yet because we still have, we have a little measured. bit of work to do. Mm -hmm. Right. So from here, I'm going to take a rubber band, and I'm just going to run it around the stems, and I'm going to slide it up. And by sliding it up, it really makes the, the compactness stay intact. Because mm -hmm. if you were just to keep it down there loose, it wouldn't be as, as tight. So we do that. Here we have this gorgeous mm -hmm. collection of flowers, and everything is just going to explode uh, with opening. But we're not finished yet. <laughs> we're going to take our solid ago. And from here, we're just going to add to our bouquet. And, and is it about the same? It's a little bit little lower. A little bit lower. Because lower. again, these uh -huh. are our featured flowers. Yeah. So we're just going to add and turn. Mm -hmm. Add and turn. Really fun, pretty, mm -hmm. ties in the color, the yellow. And this is uh, Solidago, is considered a filler flower. It only comes in yellow. Oh, it does? Yes. Uh -huh. And when it's really super, super fresh, it's so tightly closed, it's very green. So it's pretty to add into something and then uh, have it change to yellow. Mm -hmm. So there we have a whole, almost a whole rim around. So this Might is add another collar, really. Another collar, yes. Which makes your arrangement just look nice and tidy and finished. Uh -huh. So here we have this beautiful bouquet of flowers. We have this vase that's ready for um, placement. And we're definitely a little bit on the uh, tall side. Uh -huh. So I'm going to trim away again those little guys. The last ones. The last they? ones. Uh -huh. And I'm going to try to see if I can get this rubber band around the base of these. I don't see how you remember the names of all these. <laughs> <laughs> and gather those stems together. And again, yeah, that's great help. It's going to keep it more controlled. Put that there. And that way our stems are nice and controlled. So mm -hmm. very organized. So mm -hmm. here we have. So we have our first ones there, our second one is oh, there. Oh, and we covered up that big We covered wide up the band. other one. Uh -huh. Right. See. And uh -huh. so from here, we want to take a look and say, well, how long do we want to make it? If we That's like the stem cool. look, uh -huh. we would do it there, but we want to go a little lower. So mm -hmm. you bring your vase to the edge of the table, you bring your stems down low, mm. and that gives you a really good indication of where we want to cut. I see. So we're actually going to cut right below that uh, rubber band. And we're going to cut it in an angle. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is we don't want our stems sitting flat at the bottom of the vase because then they don't have a chance to drink properly. So think about putting them on their tippy toes and cutting them at a nice little angle there. And I didn't realize you needed to work with them and get them in water in about 10 so quickly. seconds. That's, Indeed. that's important. Let's give it a try, shall we? Okay. I'm going to pop those right in there. Chop see if they and hold you up. Drop. And I think they're actually still a little on the tall side because it's oh, a little okay. bit wiggly it's there. So I'm going to uh -huh. pull them back out and add, slide up that rubber band, and we're going to cut another, about another inch off. And but the good part about having the bands on it, mm -hmm. it didn't change the shape no. of the flower <laughs> when you pulled them in no, and out. No, it kept the shape exactly. One more set there. Mm -hmm. And we drop them again. So we did the chop, now we did the drop. Oh, now they stand, they stand up. That's up. a good, good lesson right there. If they tend to wobble, we know they're not short enough. They're not short enough. Oh, exactly. that's beautiful. And that is so easy. Chop and drop. Chop I like and drop. That. Doesn't take any time at all. Thank you, Casey. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to make a kitty sock, which is similar to the popular sock monkeys made years ago, and we'll learn to use some Star Builder products to create beautiful sensations. One of my next guests is a designer and crafter, and she's going to demonstrate kitty sock crafting, which is a takeoff from years ago when making sock monkeys was so popular. This is an easy and fun craft that children will also enjoy doing. Another guest is a quilter and also a designer, and she'll demonstrate how to use Sheba paint sticks and Star Builder stamps for texture to create wall hangings, jacket embellishments, or holiday decorations. Both of these topics will be featured on the next Creative Living show. If you ever have comments or suggestions or ideas for shows, you can email me at cheryl.borden 
at enmu.edu. I'd also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com and in the search window, type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much and I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer a new booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. This booklet is titled The 6500 Series, and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information, and it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. As with all of the Creative Living booklets, you'll find information on foods and nutrition, clothing and fashion, health and beauty, home decorating, and much more. For your copy of this booklet, go to our website at kenw.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on this booklet or any of the other booklets we have available online. Once again, just go to kenw.org, click on Creative Living and download the booklet titled the 6500 series. We also want to encourage you to sign up for our free e-newsletter. Just click on the sign up now button and input your email address. That's all there is to it. You'll enjoy reading an up-to-date newsletter filled with interesting topics and information. Thank you.